Hey, it's your Open Source Advocate, and I'm back with another video. Today I wanted to do a video about Jitsi Meet. So if you've ever used something like GoToMeeting or some of the other closed source options that are out there, um, they're okay. You know, Slack has a meeting thing. You, you, know, you can make a video call with it. Teams does as well. Now, now Teams has some nice integration with Outlook because it's made by Microsoft. Um, I kind of prefer it over Slack, to be honest. It's got some good recording things that let you put it straight into a stream and, and post it and things like that. And I've used it for work. Um, but really what I look for is something that I can host myself. And in this case, Jitsi Meet is definitely one of those things that you can host for yourself. So I wanted to get into the installation of Jitsi Meet pretty quickly here. It's really not that difficult. Um, if you go to their GitHub page, they have a quick install that really walks you through it if you're running Ubuntu or Debian. Um, so we will set up a Ubuntu box and just kind of run through this. It's really not that much. Um, really just letting the installs run takes longer than anything. Uh, but, but we'll go through this. Um, the last bit is this piece where you can actually do a SIP gateway. I tried to set this up with my own SIP gateway and maybe I'm missing something or maybe it's because I only have really one extension that works off of that for incoming uh, phone calls for business uh, purposes but it, it, I couldn't really get anything to come up where I could call into a number yet, so I need to kind of figure out what's happening there. Uh, might do a follow-up video for that, but everything else on here works pretty easily and pretty straightforward, so we'll, we'll just kind of get into this and get started here in just a minute. Um, so just, if you want to follow along, get ready, and we'll do this. So first thing I'm going to do is go over here to DigitalOcean, and I'm going to create a droplet, just like every week. I'm going to create this droplet. It's going to be a Ubuntu 18.04. We're going to leave it standard, but we are going to go over here and we're going to pick the $10 droplet. I don't think it'll run well on a $5, but a $10 seems to be able to do what we need. Um, and then standard is fine. I'm going to leave it on New York. Of course, pick the place that is physically closest to you, geo geolocated closest to you. That'll just give you better speeds. Um, so I'm going to leave authentication here and I'm going to pick my keys for this machine. And then I will give it the URL that I want to use, which is meet.opensourceisawesome.com. And that is everything we need. We're going to hit create droplet. So that's going to spin up the server that we want. Uh, while that's running, I'm going to go over here and get ready to add a DNS record. So I'm open on opensourceisawesome.com here on hover. Go to DNS tab and I'm going to click on add a record and it is an A record. And I set it as meet, and we will get the IP address here when the when the DigitalOcean droplet's ready. And it is, so we'll just copy this, and we will paste that right in there. I'm going to ask it to do it in five minutes, and hit start. So that's going. So we've got our droplet created. We have our instructions here. So we have to do a few things. So I'm going to open up my terminal. And I'm going to SSH, and we're going to paste in the IP address, uses my keys, we'll accept the fingerprint, and we're in. So, as always, first thing, um, just do apt update. We'll let that update and do the upgrade real quick. So that just goes out, gets all the latest packages, make sure everything's installed and up to date. Um, it's always good to do this before you do any kind of installs on your server. Just keeps keeps it easier. Make sure you don't have any kind of surprise updates after you've installed a piece of software that that software wasn't expecting for some reason. So we'll just let this run and it's done. Now it did install a kernel module here, so we're just gonna reboot the server. And then we'll log back in here in just a minute, and we'll actually log in through the actual DNS entry that we made, um, just to make sure the subdomain's working. We'll just accept the fingerprint, and we are back in. All right, so first step is to add some repositories. So we're gonna go out here and get this command. I'm gonna switch back, paste that in. We're going to grab the second one. And this is basically to add the key for that. And 
and gives us an OK, so that's a good sign. And then they want us to do an update again so that we get all of the data that we need. Easy enough. You don't have to copy and paste. You can absolutely just type these in if you feel like typing them in. Some of the longer ones, it's just easier to copy them and paste them and make sure that you're not making a mistake on the spelling. Um, I don't think I need this one. So this one actually is kind of an if something goes wrong, then so if you basically get an error up here, you might need to run this command. In this case, we didn't get an error, so we're not going to run it. So I'm going to back out of that one. So now we've got this install Jitsi Meet. So basically, here we go. We're going to do apt-get install Jitsi Meet, and then it just has the dash Y flag so that it doesn't prompt us. And it's going to go out and get all the repository information. It's going to pull down the packages that it needs, and it's going to start installing those things. Now, it does ask us for the host name. This is important, so make sure you type it correctly. And then you just hit tab to highlight the OK and hit enter. And here it's going to ask about generating self-signed certificates or using a certificate of your own. I'm going to use the generate self-signed certificate because in the next step down they're going to tell us the command that we use to actually get our Let's Encrypt certificates, which are great. Um, if you do have your own certificates though, feel free to just use the down arrow to highlight this one and then tab over to OK. Um, I'm going to use this one, so I'm going to just tab to OK, hit enter. So it will generate self-signed certificates if you don't do the Let's Encrypt step next and you don't have something available on port 80 for your subdomain. The Let's Encrypt install will fail and it will give you the warning whenever you browse to the page, the, at least for the first time, to ask you if you want to accept the certificates. So it's going to run through. It's going to set up some basic operations here and we'll just let it run. So it's done running that part, which is great. So we're going to go down to this next part that says generate a Let's Encrypt certificate and they give us exactly where the script is stored. So this got pulled down when we pulled down the other information. So we're just going to go here. I'm going to paste that in. We're going to hit enter. And it wants to know my email address, which is fine. It's going to go out and get some information and it's going to try to get the Let's Encrypt certificates for this server. So it actually installs a few things for Python. This is what's going to run the cert bot and make sure everything's running properly for Let's Encrypt. So it tells us here that it got the information. So really everything that we needed to do should be pretty much done. If you're going to do any kind of advanced configuration, there's a couple of things here that you can do in a section you can read about that. We're not going to do that part. And then Basically, here's how you open up a conference. So we're, I'm not going to go through the AdSip gateway until I figure out more about it, but we should be set. So I'm going to go to meet.opensourceisawesome.com, which you can see I did this previously to make sure I knew how to run through everything. All right, so we're all set up. This is what the homepage looks like. There are some settings here. So when I open that up, you can see my camera and you can see the audio. So you can basically go through and set those things up. You can choose which camera. So if you have multiple cameras or multiple audio inputs, you can choose which ones are, are you know, for input and output as well as for your camera. Then you've got a tab where you can set up your user and your email address. And finally, you can choose your language. When you're done with that, just click OK. Now the next thing is you can set up, basically, just type in what you want a room name to be. All this does is add it to the URL up here after a slash. So basically I've got rooms that I've already set up before down here. Um, so if I click away, I'm going to look for, I think it's just, just my first test. That's the one that I want. So I'm just gonna hit go. And everything's off. For some reason. Oh, there we go. Alright. Don't know why that took a second to kind of kick in, but it did. So up here in the URL you can see that it just adds just my first test. That's just the room name. 
and then anybody who has this link basically can join. I'm going to turn off the video here just because it does use up some CPU power, so I don't want to create a problem while I'm trying to record the screen, record the audio, and everything else. It shouldn't be a problem, but just while I go through some of the settings here. So first you can change your name. So if you click on it, it'll bring you back to this screen where you have the settings. If you come back down here, you can manage your video quality. You can go full screen. You can share a YouTube video with other people in the channel. Now this one here that says blur your background, I tried this yesterday. It, it does work, but it, it did almost kill my system trying to do that. So I'm on an iMac 2011, 27 inch, um, running a Core i5 with 16 gigs of RAM. So if that gives you a, a feel for what I'm, I'm working with, I believe it's got a AMD video card, probably an older one for sure. So if you have a really good graphics driver and, and some, some pretty good machinery, it may work pretty well, but it's in beta. So um, I wouldn't do it. It froze up my machine pretty hard, and I had to come in here and basically unset this setting. So just uh, be aware of that. So settings just brings that same screen back up that we've already seen. Speaker stats just tells you when you have a lot of people in the room, you can click on that and see like how much has each person talked. So if you've got a person who hasn't talked at all and a person who's done all the talking, either it's a presentation or something's really off balance, um, you can kind of make those determinations. Finally, you can view shortcuts. So there are um, on-screen shortcuts that you can use to control a lot of these things, and they're pretty handy. So if you want to mute the mic, you would use M and then M to unmute, um, V to turn off video, and V to turn video back on, things like that. So those are pretty handy to see. Next over is the I button. So this gives you the link that you can share with people. You can copy this link and share it out to someone, and then you can add a password for the room as well. So if you click add a password, you need to type in the password and then save that password. And then people trying to join the room will need that password. So you can put some security around your room if you need to. Um, we'll go back to the tile button here in just a minute. Of course, you can turn your camera on and off. You can hang up the call, mute or unmute your microphone. And then on the left side, we've got basically chat. So as you come into the chat, if you haven't set your username, it'll ask you to do that first. But once you've done that, you can start typing a message like, hey, there. And it shows up in chat. Um, you can close the chat window down. And if somebody does put in a chat, you can set up notifications to see those things. And, and the system will ask you to allow notifications inside the browser. Um, you can raise your hand. So this is to get the attention of a presenter, basically, um, without interrupting them audibly. And then you can just click it again to unraise the hand. And finally, you can share your screen. So on my iMac, this is great. It shows you one screen that you can share. Um, here, you can choose an application. And here, you can choose tabs in an application. But when I do this on my setup with dual monitors, it always defaults to do both monitors. And I can't get it to only do one. I'm not sure what the deal is. It may be the graphics driver. It may be something else. But just be aware of that. If you do need to, you can switch over and just do a single application if that's all you're trying to share. So I'll cancel out for now. All right, so I've got my wife. She's going to join me real quick for this meeting um, so you can just kind of see what the cameras look like whenever somebody else comes on. So here I am. She's just going to click in and join real quick. There she is. So if I go down here and I click on tile mode, you can see it looks like there's three people in the meeting, even though there's not. She's in there somehow twice. That's pretty interesting. Um, now oh, there it went. So one of them hung up. So there's the other one that actually has her in the meeting. And then if I go back out of tile mode, you can see there she is because that's the person I'm talking with. That's the one that gets the main portion of the screen. And now she'll just hang up and be done with the meeting. And that's it. It comes back to you. And once you hang up, you go right back to the main screen and everything is back to normal. And you can create another room. You can use the rooms that you've had in the past. So they've just recently added this little list of rooms you've used in the past. Um, I kind of like this. It's pretty nice. Makes it easy to go back to a room you had previously. But this is Jitsi and, and Jitsi Meet, basically. It's really a, a super easy thing to host and something nice if you want to have something especially internal to your organization or a place where you meet that you're, that you're in control of. They do have some recording that you can set up. Some of it's through Dropbox. That's not my favorite. Um, the other way to do it, it looks like you have to have a second server set up just to do the recording. Um, also not a great way to do that. So I'm kind of looking into that and looking into the options, but 
You can always use a screen recorder, but you don't get the audio from the other person um, always, especially if you're using headphones to, to kind of keep the audio um, from interrupting other people. So I'm not sure how well those things would work. Um, it would get your audio, of course, but I don't think it would get the audio of the other people in the meeting. So I'm looking into the other options that they have for actually recording the meetings, but I really like this. Uh, Jitsi Meet's great. The other part about it is if you do want to use their online hosted version, meet.jit.si, they offer that completely at no charge. They have a, a really great angel investor kind of backer that basically pays for that and pays for that cost, so it is a pretty nice service. Um, so be aware that that's out there, but if you ever want to run this yourself, it's really easy, and this is a $10 a month droplet. 